Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Snowflake podcast on Snowflake Data Marketplace and FactSet and how we're working together. My name is Justin Langseth. I'm the Data Exchange CTO, and I'm joined today by Brian Lenker from FactSet. So welcome, Brian. Thanks, Justin. Definitely appreciate uh, being able to join you guys. Self? Absolutely. Yeah, so I actually work with FactSet's channel partners and solutions exchange businesses, and I just want to put this out there. I think I speak on behalf of everyone here when I say that we're really excited about our partnership with Snowflake, and I think our clients are as well. Um, but for, for over 40 years, um, FactSet has really been working with the world's financial professionals, and they've been relying on us at pretty much every stage of their investment process. I mean, that could be idea generation, research, probably going all the way down to things like risk management, reporting, and portfolio analysis. Um, but what, we, what we've really aimed to do was to create a seamless user experience across that whole process. Um, but of course, our main goal is really to help our clients, you know, drive their productivity and performance. And, and to meet that need, FactSet offers quite a number of different flexible and open solutions covering software and data. Um, but today we're here mostly to talk about the data piece. Um, and FactSet is known for being able to combine our unique proprietary data sets um, along with in-house data um, and more recently third-party data on the open FactSet marketplace. Um, so we're, we're really doing this to help, help our clients see and seize opportunity sooner. And partnerships with firms like Snowflake, I think only help to accelerate the benefits to, to everyone involved. All right, so what you're looking at is the Snowflake data marketplace. It's a segment of uh, the Snowflake user interface. So when customers of Snowflake log into Snowflake, they can click and access the Snowflake data marketplace. And here you can see that we have a variety of categories of data uh, that's provided by uh, other customers of Snowflake. For example, FactSet is under our financial category. You can see FactSet here with their fundamentals data feed. So uh, to access any of these data sets, for example, if you wanted to access this uh, COVID-19 uh, outbreak data, you can come in and click on that tile. You can read more information about what's in this data set. You can see example queries that you could run against this data. And then uh, in this case, this data is immediately available to just get access to. So you could press this view, uh, view database button and immediately be inside looking at the tables of data. Uh, that are underneath this shared data set. Um, but for, for this example that I wanted to highlight here, um, I have three different screens just to, to run through very quickly. I'm not going to get too in-depth here. Um, but um, as an example, um, one of the things I'm interested in is looking at, you know, the, let's say the S&P 500 and which companies are um, having upcoming reporting dates. And I'm also interested in seeing what the street is saying about those companies. Should they buy? Should, should we sell? Should we hold? overweight, underweight, things like that. Um, so I'm pulling in data from three different data sets and they're all at different symbology levels. So for to start, I'm gonna pull in um, the membership for VOL, which is Vanguard's ETF for the S&P 500. Um, and I can pull in all the current holdings for that. The second piece for this is I'll take that current universe and then I'll go out and fetch all of the upcoming um, earnings report dates, and I'll grab just the next one that's coming in. So that way I get a good sense of, you know, are they reporting today or are they reporting in a few weeks? And then the third piece, and this is the one that I'll actually, I'll actually run in here, or I'll, I'll rerun it, um, we'll pull in the data from the estimates database. So we're starting with fund level information, pulling back the constituents at one symbology level, and then we're going out to estimates, which is at a different symbology level, um, and pulling in all, all of this data together to basically show me who's reporting next and then what is the street saying. Got it, so they get the benefits of all, access to all your data but without having to do the work to load it or to pay to, to store it, uh, but then they can run any analysis they want against it and join it to their own data. Um, I guess even use like external BI tools like Tableau or Looker or, or what have you or machine learning tools like HTO, H2O or Data IQ or something like that. Um, exactly. Without, without uh, without doing any extra work to get your data in as part of that puzzle. Huh? Yeah, so here we have the, the, the final result of, the, of this, this you know, pretty simple analysis is I have my, you know, my main fund membership in here. So all the constituents of this fund, I can see when they're reporting. So you can see we have a couple, a couple companies reporting today. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can see how many analysts in here are essentially saying, should you buy, hold or sell, um, overweight or underweight, and then the total number of contributing analysts here. Oh, that's very cool. Thanks for showing us a little bit of a glimpse into your data and the data that our joint customers could get access to just through this uh, marketplace mechanism.